Hello, it's Dr. Shah, the Gutsy MD, and I'm uh, generating this video as a response to a very interesting question that was posed by one of our followers. She asked that in the age of COVID, how can she better manage her chronic sinus infections due to environmental allergies? She lives in Dallas and apparently the allergies there are very bad. So I'm going to give you in this video eight different ways that you should approach chronic sinus infections as a result of allergies. So the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you do not have an underlying anatomical reason for the recurrent buildup of secretions that go on to cause sinus infections. Sometimes polyps or other anatomical barriers can delay or in hinder the, the drainage of sinus secretions. And when sinus secretions run still, they're more likely to be infected. So that's the first thing that you have to do. The second thing that I think is really important is to undergo appropriate allergy testing. Now, it used to be that in order to undergo allergy testing, you had to go through the pinprick technique, which was uncomfortable, required a significant amount of time investment in a doctor's office. But now there are highly sophisticated uh, serologic blood tests that you can do that will give you the whole pantheon of seasonal environmental allergies that you may be triggered by, as well as food. And I encourage you to get both the seasonal environmental allergy testing as well as the food allergy testing. And I'll get into why the food allergy testing is important later in this video. The third step that I want you to, or the third recommendation I should say, that I wanna make for anyone who's suffering chronic sinus infections is to consider sinus hygiene with a neti pot. A neti pot is basically an age old instrument that allows you to introduce sterile salinized water through one nair up into the sinus passages and then it drains out the other. If you do it effectively in many individuals, it can have a profound impact on your likelihood of having sinus infections. The next thing that you ought to consider, I guess this is recommendation number four, is if you have to choose between antihistamines and more sophisticated agents like leukotriene antagonists like Singulair, I encourage you to go with the Singulair or the leukotriene antagonist. Why? In another video that I'll be posting, I talk about how antihistamines uh, are sedatives really, and as a result of that, they can impair our swallow reflex. And the way that COVID-19 really does its pathogenic effect or its disease is that it relies on us aspirating because of an impaired swallow reflex, some of the secretions that contain the virus in our upper airway down into our lower lungs. So in the age of COVID, avoiding sedatives is a good idea. The fifth recommendation that I make is that you ought to consider taking a medication that's herbally derived called glyphenicin. In liquid form, it's called Robitussin, and in pill form, it's commonly called Mucinex. It's a mucolytic, it breaks up secretions and makes them more likely to drain. And the thinner your secretions are, the more likely you are to avoid infection. The next recommendation, number six, that I wanna make is avoid dairy products. Now, specifically, I'm talking about milk products, cheese products, but not yogurt. We'll talk about the benefits of yogurt later in this video. But milk products, particularly those that are commercially prepared, homogenized and pasteurized, unfortunately cause in many individuals a mucal, a promucal effect. In other words, it makes your secretions thicker. And thicker secretions are really the underpinning to why people with allergies suffer recurrent sinus disease. Now, the seventh recommendation I wanna make is that even though you think that your chronic sinus infection is being triggered by environmental or seasonal allergies, make sure that you don't also have underlying food allergies that just raise the level of inflammation in your body just a small amount, but that small amount may be just enough to tip you over into developing chronic sinus infection. I've treated many patients over my career by treating their food allergies and as a result, improving their uh, likelihood of not getting a sinus infection. Now, the eighth recommendation that I'm gonna make is a fairly detailed one, and I'll try to get through it as quickly as possible. And this is to optimize your gut microbiota. The microbiota are the trillions of bacteria that live in our gut, and in many ways form a critical part of the way that our immune system is taught how to behave. Let me explain why. 80% of our immune system lines our gut. That's just an evolutionary fact. 
And I considered it really the graduate school of our immune system. It's where our cells go in order to learn how to behave, how to distinguish between friend and foe, self and non-self, how to become properly calibrated. And who teaches them all of this? Believe it or not, it's our gut bacteria. So having the right bacteria and the right amounts of the good bacteria in our gut is a critical part of keeping our immune system functioning properly and not overreacting to either environmental or other food allergens. So how can we do that? There's a couple of things that you need to do. One, consider the regular consumption of yogurt. Yogurt is fermented milk. I don't want you to think of it as a dairy product, but as a separate entity unto itself. And the healthy bacteria that are found in yogurt are a great way to supplement your healthy gut microbiota. Another way through food sourcing that you can supplement your healthy gut microbiota is through the consumption of fermented foods, specifically uh, German sauerkraut, or if you like something with a little bit more flavor than Korean kimchi. Now kimchi doesn't just come in the form of cabbage, it also can be found in the forms of uh, cucumbers or radishes or carrots. My personal preference is uh, cucumbers. Another way that you can augment your um, gut microbiota is through the consumption of probiotics. These are pill form of healthy bacteria. Make sure if you're gonna do that, that you use probiotics that were purchased refrigerated because they're likely to have more active counts of what we call colony forming units. And then get as much as you can afford in terms of CFUs. The more CFUs the product contains, generally speaking, the more expensive it is. Now, along the way, you also ought to consider reducing the kinds of foods that make it more likely for yeast or candida to grow in your gut. So what kinds of things should you try to avoid? Raw sugars, processed sugars, high fructose corn syrup, and even an excessive consumption of complex carbohydrates like pasta, bread, rice, potatoes, or corn. So those are the eight recommendations that I have to offer. I'll think about this some more, and if I have additional tips, I'll certainly add to it with a subsequent video.